Monday Night Football. The Eagles often struggled in the first half, then started to gain momentum in the second. Looking like that highly touted offense many of us expected, but the Eagles missed a chance to go ahead when they missed a field goal with 2.27 to go. Then Ricardo Allen's interception sealed the win with 1.11 remaining, and the Falcons came back to beat the Eagles 26-24 to after squandering a 17-point halftime lead, giving Dan Quinn an upset victory in his first game as Falcons coach. I want to mention Julio Jones owned the Eagles secondary all night, 141 yards receiving and two TDs. Really quickly, we have to also mention here Sam Bradford in his first regular season game in nearly two years was 36 of 52 for 336 yards. But Philadelphia's running game, guys, really struggled. Skip, are the mm -hmm. Eagles overrated? Stephen A. Smith, I can only speak for myself here. I think I overrated them a little bit off the sensational preseason that they had in all four games. I was watching all four games because I was mostly waiting to see how that guy, that Tebow guy would do. But I did watch all four of their, their exhibition games, and they looked like they were going to beat the world. They looked like world beaters under Chip Kelly, and he looked like a genius. Last night, they didn't look quite as explosive as I thought they were going to be when the games counted. And they looked a little if I may say, less improved on defense, a little more vulnerable on defense than I thought. So I'm sticking with what I thought, that they will be a wild card team and that they will finish second to my Cowboys in the NFC East. But as a Cowboy fan, if I may qualify or disqualify myself, I'm not quite as concerned about Chip Kelly's Eagles as I was before last night. They do have a big kicker issue with Cody Parkey, and he missed the crucial one late. And I think they're going to have to fix that sooner than later. So that's going to linger over this franchise. And Molly mentioned it. Julio Jones just went off last night. Byron Ma Maxwell had a man-to-man -man a lot. There's no shame there. It, Julio's going to do that to a lot of players. So I'm not going to hold that against a Byron Maxwell, who will not have to face a Julio Jones when my Cowboys visit Philadelphia this Sunday afternoon, because obviously there's going to be no Des Bryant. But Sam Bradford, Molly mentioned I think we saw again my issues with Sam Bradford. When you don't protect him among franchise quarterbacks, he will fade and fold under pressure, maybe worst of all, worst of any of them. And in the first half, Atlanta got consistent heat on Sam Bradford, and he was folding and ducking and rolling on the ground. He took some shots in the first half, and they struggled, and they trailed at halftime 20 to 3. I don't know what Chip Kelly said or did or fixed at halftime. But they look like a different football team. They look more like the offense I thought we would see in the second half. And Sam Bradford goes 21 to 25 for 219 in that second half with a touchdown. And obviously, Jordan Matthews muffed a pass that he should have caught. Listen, Jordan Matthews is a great kid from a great school, and he will be fine. He's going to have to grow through this, but that costs them in the end the, the chance to go win that game after they've missed the field goal. Now, last point before I hand off to you. Speaking of handoffs, my man DeMarco Murray didn't get many of them. I think he started to find last night that money can't buy happiness, DeMarco, because you're not in Dallas anymore. They're not going to just line you up behind a big, bad offensive line and say, here's the ball, run north and south. Chip Kelly likes to trick people. He likes the east-west power sweeps. and. DeMarco, what, what did he have, eight carries for nine yards, four catches for 11 yards? Uh, he'll never say anything publicly, but Stephen A., I think he saw the handwriting on his new locker room wall last night. He's not going to be nearly as big a part of this offense, featuring a Darren Sproles and a Ryan Matthews. And last night, 52 passes from Sam Bradford, <clears throat> in part because they fell behind. But I think DeMarco is going to be an unhappy camper, though he'll never say so publicly. Well, he may be unhappy in terms of the number of carries he receives, but he ain't going to be ha unhappy with that paycheck he's getting because it was more than the Dallas that's Cowboys you were offering it. him. So I think he'll get over okay. that. But, well, well, again, well, well, that's not all you want, but that's certainly primarily what you want when you put your body on the line. So I'm not going to fault him for that. Let's be clear about something here. If you want to really, really look and point the finger at anybody, 
pointed at Chip Kelly. Now, obviously, you look at a guy like Byron Maxwell. You paid the big bucks in the offseason. You no longer got Richard Sherman on the other side of the Legion of Boom covering you. You're on your own out there on an island. Chip Kelly did absolutely nothing to help this brother. To put him in single coverage primarily most of the game uh, against Julio Jones, I mean, that was like suicide, for crying out loud. He got schooled, particularly in the first half, eight receptions, 97 yards. Julio Jones seemed absolutely unstoppable. The one catch he got in the second half was a 44-yarder that set up the game winning field goal. That's definitely on Maxwell from a talent perspective because he didn't seem to be on, on Julio Jones level. I mean, for, for, for crying out loud, there were times when I looked out there and I was wondering whether or not Bradley Fletcher was still playing for the Philadelphia Eagles instead of Byron Maxwell. So that, that's certainly on him. He got he got he got he gets the big bucks. You got to show up just like Julio Jones said in the aftermath of Atlanta's victory last night to our boys Ray Lewis and Chris Carter. You know, I, I expected him. I guess you couldn't be surprised that he He's in single coverage. He got paid all that money in the offseason. I guess they felt that that's what they could be able to do with him. We've learned otherwise. And you could sit there and summarily dismiss it, Skip. But the fact is, Des Bryant was supposed to be in that mix until he got hurt. You've got Victor Cruz and Odell Beckham Jr. in New York. You got Deshaun Jackson and Pierre Garçon in Washington. I'm not saying they're Julio Jones. Outside of Des Bryant, of course, because he is. Outside of that, I'm not saying the rest of them are Julio Jones, but they are no scrubs. These boys can play. And so Byron Maxwell is going to have to step up and be that elite corner that he wanted to get paid for being. Having said all of that, you're Chip Kelly. You got to know that Byron Maxwell doesn't need to be in that situation against Julio Jones. I mean, it didn't take long to realize it was going to be a long night that Julio Jones was ready to ball. That's number one. Number two... DeMarco Murray, you run in east-west. I thought Chip Kelly wanted them in from Dallas and Philadelphia because he wanted north and south runners. So that, that certainly turned me off a little bit. Number three, the Eagles' defense. They bend it a lot. They didn't break, ultimately, because they were able to come back. But they bend it a lot. And so I'm looking at it from that perspective, and I'm saying there's reason for concern. But I saw a lot of things. Uh, that I liked about the Eagles. I didn't think Sam Bradford had a bad game. I didn't have a problem with him going down, getting smacked around. As long as he got up and still slung the ball for over 350 yards, I got no problem with that, man. Darren Sproles, he was balling. Jordan Matthews, despite that late drop, was balling. But let's also come back to Chip Kelly on this point. As much of a stud as Jordan Matthews is, he's still a second-year receiver. That's your number one guy? You don't think it would have behooved you to have an experienced wide out on the football field with him? You got the rookie in Aguilar. You've got Jordan Matthews. Don't get me started with Riley Cooper. Ertz made a tremendous catch. Brent Selleck can play. But you got a second year. I like Jordan Matthews a lot. So do I. Okay? And it ain't because he's from Vanderbilt like you try to you throw out up there with your home or self. It's, it's why but the we point should all is, love him. Jordan Matthews can play. <laughs> he just... He just had no business. He just had absolutely positively no business being the team's number one option. So there's some question marks with the Philadelphia Eagles. I'm still not diverting away from my pick for them to win the NFC East. But some of the things that Chip Kelly wanted to do, there were some positives there. But questions about what he had done in the offseason came to light. Mm -hmm. Positive. Kiko Alonso, that big-time interception. That was a spectacular interception in the end zone because Atlanta could have put it away in the first half. That's good. The bad is the usage of DeMarco Murray, okay? Jordan Matthews being your number one. I think Jeremy Macklin could have been somebody that stayed there, number two. And obviously, you look at it from the perspective of DeMarco Murray and how he was used, running east-west instead of north-south or whatever. You look at Chip Kelly, there's some question marks there as well. But let's also give Atlanta some credit. They still have some work to do. But I like what I saw from Dan Quinn's squad. They were going after the Eagles, particularly in that first half. I haven't seen Atlanta's defense play that way, the way they played in the first half. I haven't seen them play that way in years. So clearly, there is a culture change that took place, that's taken place in the ATL. And that's why they were my pick to, to win the NFC South. And I believe that I've seen nothing to, do, to, to, to change my mind on that point. Yeah, I would need to give you credit for that because I also liked what I saw from Atlanta, and I was surprised by what I saw from Atlanta. And back to your receiver point quickly, 
Remember, I thought Nelson Aguilar was going to have a breakout splash of a coming out party on Monday Night Football because he showed you that in all four of the preseason games. And the Monday Night Lights, I guess, were a little too bright for him. He caught one ball for five yards, looked lost on the first, that, that one ball that was thrown to him. So the, there were only two targets. He, he was only throwing two balls the whole night. I don't know if he wound up in Chip's doghouse or Sam Bradford didn't trust him enough. He still could have a coming out party against my Cowboys on Sunday because he is a an explosive, talented young man. Well, he is. He's got a lot of talent. The bright lights might have gotten too much for him, but his first NFL regular season game, give the brother a break. I'm not going to call him out on that. He's got a lot of potential. The upside is tremendous. Let's leave it at that. The bright lights of Monday Night Football in your first game. I mean, that happens. Where I would say to you that you need to watch, what you need to watch for, Skip, is this. The Philadelphia Eagles is presently constructed is the classic case of a team that's ultra talented that can hit you with haymakers and really take you out of here. The flip side is if you get physical with them, you put a hat on them, you can sort of mess with them a little bit. Always the They're case. not the most physical team in the world right. offensively. Uh, offensively. You got some rough riders on the offensive side of the ball in various other teams throughout the NFL. We don't know if the Eagles have those rough riders. Mm -hmm. That's what we need to find out about them because teams know they're talented. They got ability. They've got speed. They can play. So what happens? In the sport of football, what are they going to do? They're going to punch you in the mouth. That's what they're going to do and dare you to do something about it. That's what we need to see from the Eagles. We saw it in the second half, but you're going to see teams coming at them. It's going to be interesting to see how they respond to that challenge. The Eagles did give up 105 yards rushing, which did surprise me, which means my Cowboys, who I think still can run the football, might have a, just a glimmer of hope on Sunday. So bottom line, are you saying Philly's a little overrated? No, I'm not saying that at all. Okay. I'm just saying that. I, I have I picked them because of their skill set and what they could do. I'm just saying I saw an Achilles heel, and that is if you get physical with them and punch them in the mouth, it can make them take a step back. Let's see how much they take a punch. They better win. They better win uh, Sunday, by the way. They just gotta win. Must to win already. I agree. Must win. Yep. Congrats to the Falcons That's and Dan right. Quinn on a big win there. Good to see that team trending in the right direction. 425 Eastern, Eagles, Cowboys at Lincoln Financial. Must see TV. Can't mm. wait. Bart mm. Scott voice. Skip.